Paul says in Ephesians chapter 5 verses 1 through 2, Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love as Christ loved us, and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. To know God is to be like God. We need to be imitators of God, meaning that where God walks, we walk. What God speaks, we speak. What God teaches, we teach. God is not just the God of the Old Testament days. God is not just the God of the New Testament days. God is the God of today, tomorrow, and forevermore. He was the same God then, he's the same God now, and he will be the same God in the time to come. See, but we need to ask ourselves, why is it important to be like God? Why must we imitate God in our day-to-day -day lives? Well, the truth is, in this life, not everyone will get the opportunity to have an encounter with God. I think we all can remember the moment where we first had an encounter with God. Where we were, who we were, how we were. Not everyone will be born into a church-going family. Not everyone has a loved one or a friend who brings them to a Bible study, or brings them to a church service, or brings them to a, a gospel concert. Not everyone will have people in their circles who will preach God's word to them. Not everyone will have companions who uplift them and encourage them in God's word. Not everyone will find a spouse or a significant other who loves God more than they love the relationship. The closest thing that these people will ever receive when in having an encounter with God God is you. The only God that they may ever know is the God that dwells inside of you. For it is no longer that you who lives, but it is Christ who lives within you. For as it is written in Matthew chapter 5 verses 14 through 16, ye are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. The good works that you do is not for you to be glorified by God, but it is for you to bring glory unto the Father. When people see you walk in love, they see the love of the Father. When people see you talk with love, they hear the love of the Father. When people see you pray, with love, they see the Holy Spirit that dwells in you. It's not enough to just receive from God, but we need to give what we received from God, the wisdom, the revelation, the teachings, the corrections. We need to give all of that back to God's people. We need to give all that we've received, all that we've learned, all that we've been taught back to God's people. One thing this generation attempts to do, an emphasis on attempts, is low-key relationships. Somebody took me off the market, but I ain't gonna say who. I might take a picture of the back of their head, might take a picture of their hand in front of the dinner plate, might take a pic in front of their car, but you're never gonna guess who I'm with. Somebody's making me happier. Somebody's spoiling me with all these gifts, showering me with all these blessings, but I ain't gonna say who. Gotta keep it low-key. Nobody needs to know about this relationship that I found. It's all mine. See, and the reason why we like to keep our relationships low key is because we're afraid that if people see us thriving, if people see us happy, if people see us having a good thing, they are going to want it and they're going to want to take it for themselves. We're afraid that these people are going to do everything in their power to break our relationship apart. But see, when it comes to our relationship with God, scripture tells us to do the exact opposite. For as it says in Mark chapter 16, verses 15, Jesus said to his followers, go everywhere in the world and tell the good news to everyone. This gospel, this relationship was never meant to be low key. We want the world to know about God. We want the world to know what God can do. We want the world to see what God is capable of. We want the world to see the works that God can do. We want the world to see the lives God can change. We want the world to see the hearts that God can mend back together. We want the world to see the miracles that God can perform. We want the world to see the truth of the gospel. It's not enough to just talk gospel, but we must be living out the gospel as well. For you and I may be the only gospel that some may ever see. We need to stop focusing on living for the rewards of heaven and start focusing on a life won over to the Father. I can sit here on this internet and give you a thousand motivational messages. I can sit here and tell you that nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. That God is near to the brokenhearted. That your sin doesn't define you. That God's mercies are new every morning. But that's just one part of the gospel. The gospel was never meant to just motivate you or even inspire you. The gospel was never even just about you. It was about them. And you might be asking yourself, who is them? Who could he possibly be talking about? I'm talking about the man you walk past on your way to work. I'm talking about the homeless man you won't give money to because you're afraid that he's gonna use that money to buy more drugs. 
I'm talking about the single mother who you clown on social media because you view her as a slut or a whore or as someone who couldn't keep a man. I'm talking about that one kid you still hold resentment for because he used to bully you back in elementary school. I'm talking about the father and mother that you have a strained relationship with because they could never be the parent that you needed them to be. I'm talking about the spouse that cheated on you, the friend that betrayed you, those who persecute you, those who hate you. The gospel is for them too. You can't pick and choose who deserves to hear the gospel. You don't decide who's worthy to be ministered to. We need to remember that Christ didn't die for one. He died for them all, the ones who hated him. The ones who betrayed him, the ones who cursed him, who spat on him, who beat him, who lied to him. He died for the just and the unjust. He died for us all because he knew that the saving gospel was just as much for you as it is for them. To know God is to be like God. And God loves them all enough to give them the gospel. So, how about you? Can you love God's people enough regardless of what they've done to you, how they've hurt you, how they've betrayed you, what they've stolen from you? Can you love them enough to give them the gospel? Can you love them enough to be the only gospel that they'll ever see?